Here we go. A bag contains 10 red, 6 green, and 5 white marbles. Determine the probabilities of the following. Okay, the first one drawn is white. I think that one I don't need to do a tree for. The first one is white. 5 white out of how many marbles grand total? What's the probability of that? 5 out of, sorry? 21. Okay. B. The second one drawn is white given that the first one drawn was white and there is no replacement. Now, here's what they're saying. Find the probability of the second one given that the first one drawn was white. Okay. Suppose the first one drawn was white. Now we're on the second pick. How many white marbles are left in the bag? Four out of... And you know what they're talking about? I think in my tree where I have white, green, red, white, green, red, white, green. They're talking about that number right there. Okay. And yeah, 4 out of 20, lowest terms, 1 out of 5, yeah, point two, sure. Uh, event A is defined as the chance that it will be sunny tomorrow. Zero, you say? Well, we're getting there. We're getting closer. If there is an 18% chance that it will be sunny tomorrow, what's the per probability of not A as a percentage? 82%. Compliment. Very, very useful skill. Hopefully you've already realized how handy that can be. Question 3. In question 3, I see percentages, and I see both. I'm going to use a Venn diagram. If you did this with the formulas, great, but I'm going to go like this. We have hamburgers, pizzas, both was 40. I guess that means I'm going to put a 20 there. There's my 60% liking hamburgers. I guess that means I'm going to put a 30 there. There's my 70% liking pizza. What do all four areas have to add to? If it's a percent, it's got to be out of 100. So I got 60, 30, 90. You know what? It's got to be 10% there, and neither is 10%. I would get there with a Venn diagram. By the way, neither is not or. So if you did this with the formulas, you would do or, which is one plus the other minus the overlap, and then complement. Number four. This is a reasonably tricky question. You know what? I'm going to fall back on a sample space. If I can count it, I can solve it. So here's what it says. A game begins with two cards being dealt from a standard deck of 52 cards. So here's my two cards. To win this game, the next card dealt must be the same as either of these first two cards or fall between them. If the first two cards are a 3 and a 10, what's the probability of winning the game? All right. If I've dealt two cards and I'm picking a third card, how many cards are left in the deck? What's this going to be out of at least? Pick two, 50 cards left in the deck. Right? Here they are. What's left? Um, how can I win? If I get another three, how many more threes are left in the deck? Three. Or, what does or mean? If I get another ten, how many tens are left in the deck? Or... If I get a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, how many cards is that? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9? Well, right now, how many is this? 6. And how many uh, different suits are there? I think it's 6 times 4. I think there's 24 different 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9s. 
I'm going to just count and I'm going to say, you know how many different ways I can win out of 50? That many ways. There may be a way to get there with a tree. I, I, okay, I, for one card, I can count. Three out of five, apparently. 36? Really? Really? Okay. Each of the 11 letters of the word mathematics is placed on a separate card. A card is drawn and not replaced, and then a second card is drawn. What's the probability that they're vo both vowels? How many cards are we picking here? Two. Okay, probably now I'll go to a tree. For one card, like the previous question, I'll count. Two cards, tree. And I think it's going to be vowel, not vowel, vowel, not vowel. But I'll go vowel one, not vowel one, vowel two, not vowel two. Here's my tree. Vowel one, not vowel one. Folks, a little chatter back there. Shh, thank you. Vowel two, not vowel two, vowel two, not vowel two. Uh, what are the vowels A, E, I, O, and U? How many vowels are in the word mathematics? One, two, three, four. Four out of? Eleven? Anyone besides David? Thirty-six. Is it eleven? Okay. How many non-vowels, David? Seven out of eleven. Okay. Down this branch, we picked a vowel. How many vowels are left? And you know what? Since all they wanted was vowel one, vowel two, do I really need to fill in the rest of the tree? I might on a test just to do my checking error, uh, add to one, add to one. But uh, you know what? This is a simple enough one. I'm pretty confident. I think it's going to be for, oh, let's write the statement just in case they show that. Probability of vowel one and vowel two is 4 out of 11 times 3 out of 10, 12 out of 110, whatever the heck that is in lowest terms, I don't care. Could you have done that without a tree? Uh, you know what? Now that I think about it, because it's the same event twice in a row, I probably could have visualized that particular branch. Okay. Number six. How many cards? Number six, how many cards? One. So I'm going to fall back on frequently just counting because I know what a deck of cards looks like. I'm not going to be doing a tree here because tree is for two separate events. Uh, getting a heart, 13 out of 52, one quarter. B, getting a face card, 12 out of 52. C, Getting a 10, 4 out of 52. I'm just counting. Oh, not B. I'm not going to count. I'm going to use the complement. Uh, 40 out of 52, yes? Okay. A or B. So here is one of the only times... I'll use the formula because I don't have a picture of a deck of cards in front of me. This is going to be... A plus B minus A and B. Or means add minus the overlap. It's going to be 13 out of 52 plus 12 out of 52 minus, and I'm just going to count. I know and means multiply. And means multiply when it's separate events, not when it's one card. So now we're fine-tuning our definitions. How many cards are face cards and hearts at the same time? Yeah, three out of 52. Hope you said three. Sure you did. Uh, it's 13 plus 12, 25, take away three. 22, is that right? Yeah. Out of 52. So for single card draws, I fall back on. If you can count it, you can solve it. Yeah, I'll use the formula occasionally. Uh, A and C. Okay, not and means multiply here. We're not doing a tree. Instead, how many cards are hearts and tens at the same time? I think, isn't that the ten of hearts? Right? How many ten of hearts are there in the deck? 
one out of 52. G, A or not B, okay. This is going to be A plus not B minus the overlap. It's going to be A, 13 out of 52, plus not B, oh, 40 out of 52 minus, okay, ready? How many cards are hearts? And at the same time, what does not B mean? How many hearts are not face cards? That's right, that's what, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to count them. I'm going to say there's 13 hearts altogether. How many hearts are face cards? So how many are not? Ah. Thirteen plus forty is fifty-three. By the way, I would know fifty-three out of fifty-two was the wrong answer because can I ever have an answer bigger than a hundred percent? Don't think so. Oh, it's guaranteed to happen and then some. But my coach says I'm supposed to give a hundred and ten percent. That's bad math. Uh, anyways, fifty-three take away ten. Forty-three. And the last one. Not A and not B. Okay. How many cards are not hearts and not face cards? Well, first of all, how many non-face cards are there in the deck? 40. How many of those are hearts? I think 10. Because there's four suits. So how many are not hearts? I think 30. I, by the way, you see, I complimented twice to get that. I could have gone forwards. I said, you know what? This is going to be easier. I know there's 40 face cards, and it's 10, 10, 10, and 10. Sorry, 40 non-face cards. There's 10, 10, 10, and 10. So 30 of them are not hearts. Okay? Didn't, didn't go fancy there, Brett. Discounted. That, that's a tough one, though. Got to be honest. I really have to think about that. One mark for each of those. Turn the page. Okay. Question six. How many dice in this question? Two. Chart for dice. Remember we did the six by six dice chart? I'm going to do a, this is a, often what they'll do because six by six is a lot of handwriting. They'll give you what they call a tetrahedral dice, four by four. So I'm going to have this. The first dice, you get a one, two, three, or four. And you have the second dice, you can get a one, two, three, or four. So here is my chart. I could get a one, 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 two, one, three, one, four. Two, one, two, two. 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4. Chart Nick takes, even for a 6 by 6 set of dice, really, 30 seconds probably. Well worth the investment, especially because I notice there's an A, B, C, D. You know what? Then it's really worth listing them all because then we can fall back on our counting. By the way, what's each of these probabilities going to be out of? How many outcomes are there? 16. Right? Boy, that table's having some bad, bad karma there. Okay. What's the probability that the sum of the two dice is equal to 6? I think that's this one, or this one, or how many? Now I'm going to erase those so I don't muck up my diagram. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 3 out of 16. B, the product is a multiple of 3. What does the word product mean? Okay, when you multiply these together, 3 goes into it. What's the only way that 3 will go into it. I think if one of the original factors is 3. 
I think really what they're talking about is all these ones and all those ones. I don't think any of the other ones work. How many? Seven out of 16. Right? If you can count it, you can solve it. The number on the first die, that's the here, is bigger than the number on the second die. So the way I've drawn this, it looks like the second number is the first die. Kind of a dumb way for me to write it, but that's okay. What this is asking me in my chart is, in which of these is the second number bigger than the first number? Uh, here, here, and here. How many? So if you did your first die here and your second die there, you probably got the bottom corner circled or colored in. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we're not using a formula, we're just counting. Six out of 16. The sum of the two dice is equal to six, or the product of the two dice is a multiple of three. Here was my sum equal to six. Here was my multiple of three. 3, right there. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is it 9? Yeah. Or I could have gone uh, 1 plus the other minus the overlap. I could have used the formula too, but I can count. 9 out of 16. E. What's the word after 4? Conditional. Last day's lesson. I gave you what I thought was a handy dandy easy way to remember this. First of all, this is the probability. I'm going to now, this is the only time I go to formula. What's the given? What's the given? It's not for. What did they give me? And you got to translate the English grammar here. Okay. Sum is six. What do they want me to find? First begins with a four. And that's going to be both over the given one. Now, the given one is the sum is six. I think I calculated that already, did I not? Look at your answers. What was the probability that the sum was equal to six? I've scrolled down, but... Was it 3 out of 16? Yeah? Okay. What's the probability that it adds to 6 and the first dice is a 4? So here was the ones that added to 6. How many of those also added to 4? Sorry, how many of those also started with a 4? Now, I'm going to circle this one because I put the first dice at the end like a complete idiot, but you know what? How many have a yellow streak and a red circle on them? One out of 16. There's the probability that you started with the four and added to six, divided by the probability that you added to six, both over the given one, how do you divide? You know what? I think when you go, how do you divide by a fraction, flip it and multiply, you get that. Now, here's the short way we could have done this one. Jen, how many have a yellow streak through them? How many are circled out of? See it? You could, If you already know you're on this yellow streak, What's the probability that it started with the four? That's really what that last question was saying. The one out of three actually jumped out at me in the diagram. I probably could have solved that without the formula intuitively, but usually for conditional, I don't have a formula. So what's this quiz out of? I think I went one mark per. Let me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
15, 16, 17, 18. One mark per. By the way, E was sneaky. I normally don't give you a quiz on the topic that I just taught, but it was such a nice way to reinforce the topic, I left it on there. In previous years, I made E a little one mark bonus. <clears throat> no, I'm going to say it was fair game for one mark on a take home quiz. Give yourself a score out of 19, please. <coughs> And when you are done, pass them in. So before we move on, before I turn you loose, the O.J. Simpson trial, one of the most famous ones, actually, last century. So O.J. was charged with killing his wife. And although there were various defense tactics, the prosecution had a major strategy. Their main strategy was OJ was a spousal abuser, which was documented. They had 911 calls, and, and the defense didn't try to deny that. So OJ beat Nicole. Therefore, he was much more likely to kill Nicole. And they were pounding that. He hit his wife, he killed his wife. He hit his wife, he killed his wife. The O.J. trial was not going good. At the time, he had uh, Alan Dershowitz and Robert Shapiro as his attorneys, two of the most high-priced attorneys in the U.S. And then he brought in a name you may have heard, Johnny Cochran. And Johnny Cochran, right away, he wanted to remove this, oh, O.J. beat his wife, therefore he killed his wife strategy. So here's what he said. Right now we have the prosecution. And the prosecution is saying, given that O.J. beat his wife, the probability that he killed her is high. The defense, Johnny Cochran, came along and he said, uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I have reams of statistics, and in only 1% of spousal abuse cases does it end in murder. So he said this, the probability that given that there is abuse, the probability that murder occurs, well, he says if, if only 1% of the cases end in murder, the probability that OJ is not the murderer, 99% chance OJ is innocent. The numbers aren't quite this high. I'll show you the article, but this was his point with the jury. Spousal abusers don't kill their husbands. Spousal abusers so don't, 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 don't kill their wives. Spousal abusers don't kill their wives. And it's true. Very, very, very few domestic abuse situations end in murder. But the prosecution missed out because the correct conditional probability statement should have been this. Given that you have a husband beating the wife, and given that a death has occurred, what's the probability that the husband is the murderer? You see the extra step there? 85% of the time, the husband did it. That's why the police always look at the husband right away. We sadly had a fairly famous trial quite recently in Surrey where someone claimed that his wife had been killed and suddenly reported her missing and suddenly it turned out to be the guy that reported her missing. Was found guilty just a few months ago, right? So, had they had a mathematician on their staff, the odds are pretty good. OJ might have been found guilty. I actually even found the article. I was, uh, where is it? Bayes formula and OJ Simpson. I'll show you the actual percentages. They aren't quite as high as I said. And already you can understand most of this. You're going to see, hey, that's conditional probability. By the way, what's the symbol for and? I told you I use a comma. What's the actual symbol for and? An upside down U. It stands for intersection, overlap. It's the Venn diagram. Okay, fine. So they're using different symbols. But can you see it's and and both of the given one? Same equation we've been doing. Let's look at O.J. Simpson. So if we really quickly 
Alan Dershowitz, if you read this right here, it says he stated that only, oh, it was even smaller, 0.1% of men who physically abuse their wives end up killing them. So that means there's a 99.9% .9 here, the compliment, chance that OJ was innocent. As it turns out, if you do the conditional formula given that a death has occurred, you see that number there? 81% of the time, the husband did it. Not 90% chance, 99% chance of innocence, 81% chance of guilt. I love conditional probability. Very counterintuitive. You have the remainder of class to work on the homework from last day. I'm done.